So many of you know um, how passionate I am personally about virtual reality. Um, from the moment I first tried an Oculus Rift, I've cared very deeply about it, and I believe that it's going to be a very, very profound technology that won't just change um, something, it's going to change everything. But usually when we talk about virtual reality, we tend to talk about virtual reality in terms of gaming and, more latterly, of entertainment. And yet, we are seeing virtual reality being used in new areas and new ways. Something we call VRAS, or VR as a service. We're seeing virtual reality starting to be used for safety training. We're seeing virtual reality be used in CAD, in design and manufacturing. Uh, recently, the world's first surgery took place in London, in VR. And also more recently, the world's first legal case was resolved with a jury using VR. This VRAS, we believe, will power the success of VR into the future. But the other key area of VR, which is making a very real difference, is in medicine. And we are very pleased to be working with uh, a very esteemed gentleman using VR to treat PTSD. So with that, I would like to bring on stage my third guest, uh, Dr. Skip Rizzo, to talk about his work. Please give a warm welcome to Skip. Hey, hey, well, Amen. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, um, I think we can all agree that virtual reality has arrived. We're sort of in a renaissance. We've seen advances in all the enabling technologies, computing power, graphics, user interfaces, display technology, and this gives us power to do things that, as we've already seen, are quite compelling, but I think we can go beyond that and even think about maybe we can heal people using virtual reality. This isn't a far-fetched idea, and in fact, kind of under the radar over the last 20 years has been like a scientific literature brewing where people have been applying VR clinically to address the needs of people with autism, anxiety disorders, post-stroke rehabilitation, um, oh, and PTSD, the area that we work in. Um, the way we address PTSD using virtual reality is to deliver what's already an evidence-based approach called exposure therapy, where we help patients to confront and process very difficult emotional memories. And typically it's done in imagination, but with VR what we typically do is to create simulations. And I know it sounds very difficult and sounds like, why would you do this? But we create simulations of what people were traumatized by. And our work right now is focused on treating service members and veterans who have gone through the hell of war and come back with invisible wounds of war, things that people don't see on the surface but are brewing on the inside, and we help them to go back and confront and process difficult emotional memories within VR simulations of Iraq and Afghanistan. And what we've done at the University of Southern California Institute for Creative Technologies is to build out a 14-world simulation where we can take a patient, put them in a simulation that resembles what they were traumatized by, and a clinician can operate a control panel that allows them to, in real time, update and introduce features that add to the experience um, and make it more customized or relevant to the user's experience. Um, we don't throw people in the deep end of the pool. It starts off very gradually. But in the end, uh, the scientific literature has shown over the last 10 years of doing research with this um, that we can make a difference for folks, that we can actually significantly reduce PTSD symptoms and help people move forward in their life. And we're doing this now with civilian PTSD, and I don't know if we want to talk about that, but I think this is the step forward where we can start to think about using this technology in a pro-social purpose to really make a difference for people that, you know, that deserve our best efforts using the best technology. And uh, the Radeon Pro technology has given us, has enabled us the ca capability to create simulations that are credible and relevant for these folks and to update them in real time based on the user's ongoing experience. So I want to thank AMD for their support 
so far on this, it's been incredible. You, you guys are the first ones, the first big company to actually pay attention to this stuff. So uh, I'm very thankful for that. Well, I'll just give you a welcome. Now, Skip, we are at SIGGRAPH 2016. The audience is interested in graphics. Can you explain a little bit the difference um, that the granularity of the experience and the graphics can make in the treatment? Well, you know, we have to be able to put somebody who's been in war in a simulation that is credible. Uh, that, you know, it can't look like Call of Duty and it can't look like Battlefield 4. That, that looks a little just, it's, it's almost hyper real and there's not enough room for the patient's imagination. So we have to tread a thin line between how graphically compelling but how functionally relevant it is. So we have to be able to, in real time, have a clinician be able to ignite an IED five feet away or to have a helicopter buzz by. Not something pre-programmed, but something that you, know, you have to build around. And um, you know, it, it's kind of an art. It's the art and science of clinical care. And it requires, requires the power of the technology that you guys are, are making available to us. So I'm very proud to tell you all that we're working together with Skip to upgrade the first veterans clinics to improve the treatment and, and, the, and the care. Yeah, I mean, this is great. Um, AMD is providing workstations to the top veteran hospitals and military care centers that are delivering this treatment. And I can't tell you how grateful we are because this is going to expand the reach and the power of the technology to make a difference for people that, that deserve our best efforts. So, Ladies thank and gentlemen, you. we give a very big round of applause. Skip, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.